Good morning. We send greetings for our brothers and sisters in the First Baptist Church of Redlands. We are blessed by the opportunity of worshiping with you this morning. The World Mission Offering theme for this year is 2020 vision in the year 2020. I once was blind, but now I see. Certainly, it's difficult to claim that we have had a 2020 vision in the year 2000. The 2000 year will be remembered as the year of COVID-19 and a year that has break some records, the record of forest fire in the history of this country, hurricanes hitting the southern coast of the, of the United States, the thousands of people without jobs and without housing, a record of death because of the pandemic, and the year hasn't finished yet. For those who has lost everything in a fire or hurricane, for those who have lost their jobs and family members due to COVID-19, life is unclear. There is no light in the tunnel they have entered. Feelings of sadness, discouragement, and a sense of abandonment are normal. Honestly, I can't say I know how you feel because I never been there. However, to all of those who are living any of this difficult time, I can say, I see you, I listen to you, and I honor you. I will invite you right there where you are to have a time of silence, have a prayer time to honor those who are in a dark tunnel today. Please join me in this time. Listen to our prayers. Today, the reading of the scriptures is in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. And it's read the way, this way. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. And this is the word of the Lord. The story of the blind man, this particular one, is found only in the Gospel of Mark. There is no other place in the New Testament that you can find it. And it's a miracle um, that it was done progressively. I wish I could have time to go to the many details and teachings we can find in this story. 
But today, I will only make some questions to the test. Why questions? And also, I want to, um, I want to think about the three touch that Jesus gave to this man. The first why. Why the people bring the blind man to Jesus? First, it seems to me that the people know that Jesus had made some miracles in the other regions, and they wanted to witness firsthand how Jesus can make a miracle. They were not necessarily interested in Jesus' teaching or in Jesus' person, but yes, in the miracle maker people said he was. Second, the blind man was a loved member of the community. They loved him and wanted him to be healed. They begged to Jesus. He, they begged to touch him. The blind man was silent and really probably not believing that Jesus was able to heal him. He didn't call upon Jesus, didn't came to Jesus. He was brought to Jesus by his neighbors or a member of his family. From the upcoming of the story, we can conclude that this man was not blind from birth. For some reason, he has lost his vision. The verse said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus lay his hands on his eyes again, and he opened his eyes. His eyes was restored. That's what gave us the clue that that man was, uh, was blind because of an illness. And the second question, the second why I want to make to the test is, why? Why Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village? I think Jesus didn't want to make a miracle in Bethsaida that day. Jesus was a teacher, the Messiah. Jesus was much more than a miracle maker. And many couldn't understand that. They shouldn't get closer to Jesus because of the miracles he can make. They should go to Jesus and get near to, G to Jesus because of his teaching of a new kingdom and a new way of living their lives. Instead of performing a miracle in the midst of a crowd that was curious, Jesus took the blind man outside the village. But why? The Bible, the story said that Jesus took the blind man by his hands. This is an act of intimacy, proximity, security, and companionship. He led him in the way he took his hand, making him feel secure. Jesus don't want them to say the word and heal him. He needed to be led. He needed to be heard. He needed healing of his eyes, but yet he needed more. He needs something else. 
We should remember this man lost his ability to see. It is not the same to be born blind than lost the precious gift of being able to see. My father was 50 years old when he lost three quarter of his vision in both eyes. He is partially blind. When this happened, he lost not only his vision, but also his ability to work as he used to. He was depressed, angry, cursing his new life every day, lost in this new darkness that surround him. And I guess this is why I am so touched by this story, by this miracle. Praise God, praise God that we were able to accompany my father, that our prayers and faithful companionship brought him to Jesus. For 30 years, he has been able to drive without having an accident. Praise God for that. All this time, he, he has been able to work in the garden, and he loved that, and he feels comfortable now on the way he is, even though he is still being partially blind, coming to Jesus, knowing the Lord, getting near to him, give him a new, a new purpose, give him a new vision, give him a new hope in life. The touch of Jesus is important. Yes, Jesus could understand the desolation and the anger of this blind man. man. He needed to be taken by his hand and led out of his environment in order to experience healing, not only of his blindness, but also of his soul. He needed extra time. The touch of his hands. The leading of Jesus restored his hope. Why Jesus spit on his eye? Why he has touched him twice? Why he has to do that? Some people may think this is a strange miracle and a strange way of healing. A spit saliva in the eyes for some, it could be a disgusting way of performing a miracle or a disrespectful one. First, it was not anybody's saliva. It was Jesus' saliva. Jesus knew the curative properties of the, of the human saliva. He is our creator. He knew, he knew this man need an ointment of something or something that can help him and that can heal his scars. Jesus know it is possible that the illness this man had was causing him pain. Jesus wanted to heal the pain in his eyes, but also in his soul. That is why he smoothly laid down his hand on him. The second touch restored the blind man's confidence. Why I say that? because he was able to speak the truth. 
He did not pretend to be healing just because he can now see something. He was not going to content by a partial miracle. He was now ready to receive his miracle. When Jesus asked the question, do you see anything? He was prone to answer. He said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Oh, I can imagine this blind man thinking this way. Jesus, if you brought me up to here, if you have restored my hope, I know you can do better. I know now that I, I, I am hoping and that I have hope. I know that you can restore my sight, that you will the complete miracle in me. Then Jesus lay his hand on his eyes again. And he opened his eyes. His sight was restored. The third and last touch of Jesus restored the sight. The miracle was complete. Jesus restored this man hope, his confidence on himself, and gave him a new vision. He raised him up. Today, we probably not have a 2020 vision, but through glasses or surgeries, uh, our vision is restored and we can see clearly we might not be physically blind. However, there is another kind of blindness around us. A lot of people are spiritually blind. People who have lost their hope because of an illness, the loss of their loved ones, and because of the poor circumstances of life and the oppression they are living constantly. When I look at the migrants in the southern border of this country and other countries, the victims of domestic violence and of human trafficking around the world, those who are constantly seeking for justice and peace and those who live in extreme poverty made me compare them with this blind man. He was living without hope. He was living without confidence on himself and without vision. The ones living among us today have sight, but no hope. They can have sight, but not confidence on themselves. They have sight, but no vision. They, their sight is blurry, is blocked with they, this immense dark cloud of real life problems. Even though they have sight, they cannot see. They have no strength to move forward. They be literally stuck in their circumstances. The question is what we can do. We need to do what the neighbors or the family of that blind man did. We need to bring them to Jesus. We can't resolve their circumstances. We cannot give them hope or vision, but Jesus can. 
We can probably rebuild the houses or bring them a new job. But yes, yes, we can give them clothes, give them food, or shelter them. We can sit with them, listen to their story, show our genuine compassion, care, and love. We can accompany them in the journey to find Jesus so they can recover their hope, their self-esteem, and their vision for life. First Baptist Church of Redlands, we are the people of God. First Peter 2.9 said that we are the ones chosen by God, God's instruments to do his work and speak out of for him, the, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you and for me. He brought us from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted, from the darkness to a wonderful light that we have found in Jesus. We need to continue with our mission of sharing the great news of salvation because we once were blind, but now we can see. International ministries, global servants, are called to go out of the village. We are called to get out of our homeland to share the good news. But we, we can't do it without you. We need your prayers. We need your companionship in the field. We need your support. First Baptist Church of Redlands, Thank you very much for your partnership with our ministry in Tijuana, Mexico. From the bottom of our heart, we give you thanks. Thank you for every blanket you need, for those visits you made, for the special offerings you give, for the dental clinics you made possible for those migrants at the border, and for be light in the community of Redlands. May God bless you. Que bon die beninu. Dios les bendiga. <laughs>